Welcome back. Given our panel tonight, I had a few questions, and it's uh, close to home. New York politics here. Uh, we saw last year's historic vote to legalize same-sex marriage in New York, and four Republican state senators crossed party lines to vote in favor of it. Now, of those four Republicans who voted yes, three were primaried, and, and one decided to step down. Mark Rosanti, he won his primary easily. Stephen Salin survived a primary challenge, the recount here, and he won by the narrowest of margins. Roy McDonald, not so fortunate, defeated in his primary. The fourth Republican, yes vote, James Alessi, as I mentioned, retiring. So, Ed, I have a question for you. I said at the time, and I said this on Friday, I thought um, one of the more courageous things that I've seen here a lawmaker do, um, they were all primary. And if asked, maybe you were, should these guys have been primary? I mean, they voted political conscience. You look now, it's popular in the state of New York. Um, was it courageous what they did, or should they have lost their positions for doing R it? Rich, first of all, they weren't all primaried. Unless Three he stepped down okay. and was replaced with another candidate. And he stepped down for other reasons. He trespassed on property, broke his leg. So he got three. One won handily, 60, 40. Well, one's out of a job and one won by the, the slightest of margins. The other, uh, the one who is out of a job was primaried by a very good, popular county clerk named Kathy Marcioni. She's a good candidate. Now, this probably added, helped her, because she is against gay marriage. It was one of the issues here but she would have been a successful candidate. But my, my, my question is more of a micro so, question. So than I, I don't overrate gay okay, marriage but in let's, this whole But I have a process. different issue, which is Stephen Saland, who I've known and covered up in Poughkeepsie for a long time, I think a lawmaker of great principle. He took a position, if he didn't take it, he probably would have been primary. He took a position that he thought was right. And my question is, at the state party level, do they say, hey, you know what, we might not agree with him, but you know what? He's taking a principled position here, and he shouldn't have to get primary because the of it. The state party doesn't oh. control. Oh, I know they that. don't. I'm just asking it's your America. perspective on well, it. No, we, we, look, if someone wants to primary, and that's one of the issues, and it's land one. That's the bottom line. Yeah, Ed Cox is a very bright, decent, uh, and thoughtful person. I never and that. he's trying to make uh, a, a, silk, uh, a silk purse out of a sow's ear here. The fact of the matter is that the Republican Party electorate in this state has turned almost as hard right as the national electorate, you get a guy like Roy McDonald, who was a terrific senator, never would have lost if it wasn't for his vote. Steve Saland winning by 99, it's crazy. Uh, it's, it's crazy. The bottom line on all of it is, there's a problem in the Republican Party getting out of step with the American people. I, w I, I feel for you, well, but not a lot. Well, I, I, get a specific, I, I, appreciate, I, a I appreciate your feeling for me, but well, the bottom line here's my is specific question. that the only one who lost on this issue lost to a very good candidate. Or okay, but Ed, here's there. my question, because recently we had Wendy Long, who's a Republican nominee for the U.S. Senate um, in New York. She's looking to unseat Senator Gillibrand. She describes herself as 100% pro-life, opposes same-sex marriage, has achieved the highest possible grade from the NRA. Additionally, when she appeared on our program, we asked her about this controversial new subway ad, um, and I was really just having the conversation about where the limits of free speech are. Um, this comes from the American Freedom Defense Initiative, whatever the heck they are, and it reads, as you can see there, in any war between the civilized man and the savage, support the civilized man, support Israel, defeat jihad. The implication is anyone on the other side of Israel is a savage. So I had the debate about where does the freedom of speech start and stop, but Wendy Long, apparently didn't get the memo or the meaning of my question. This is what she thinks of the ad. Well, first of all, this doesn't seem very ugly to me. You're, you're comparing, you're saying one is civilized and the other is it, not. Is it civilized to, to blow people up? Was it civilized? Of course not. And to I not all Palestinians are savage. Well, right? it's only talk. it doesn't say all Palestinians, Richard. It says jihad. Okay, uh, let's even chalk it up to she, we had different interpretations of the same question. My point is different, Ed, which is statewide, you guys haven't won since Pataki. And you go back to some of the people who've held office in New York. If I kept on going back to the Teddy Roosevelt's of the world, I'm talking about Jacob Javits. We were talking about him recently. Um, socially, I mean, socially progressive, but fiscally conservative. Yet, he wouldn't have a snowball's chance in you know where of getting through a Republican primary right now. And 
as the son-in-law of Richard Nixon, who I think would not have a place in the Republican Party right now, your job is to get Republicans elected. Could a Jacob Javits or somebody who's progressive socially but fits the mold on the fiscal issues have a fighting chance in a primary today statewide? Yes, depends where. Depends where. I'm saying the uh, state of New York. In the state of New York? Sure. Depends where here in New York. But you must have had, I won't ask you to give up names, you Look, must have had some the, candidates the who come issue. to you and say, hey Ed, I'm just not that far right on this stuff. I might support, uh, I might be pro-choice, I might be for same-sex marriage, but I am a Reagan Republican when it comes to fiscal issues here and that's where I am. Can they even get through the primary Most process of, even if they have money? At this point, in the highest tax state in the United States, uh, the most important issue is the fiscal issues. And whether you're socially liberal or socially conservative is not the important issue. It's are you a real That's why he's state chair, because he understands how to frame a terribly difficult political thing in the most favorable light. The Republican Party electorate in this state has turned hard Tea Party we, right, and the voters of the state will reject it every time. Well, we, we are I running. Was, we yeah. are running in the congressional district here against Nita Lowy, Joe yep. Carvin, who is a, a social liberal, mm -hmm. a fiscal conservative, yep. a great candidate who's got a chance of beating no, uh, Nita Lowy. I, she, he doesn't. He's a nice man. He's going to get his clock cleaned. Toast. That's the, the word. To get, but that's to get not the point. It was a D12. That's it's a D5. And anything when D6 you have better, primaries, when you don't have selected candidates, your party's turned hard, 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 hard right, and it doesn't fit with the are, New York Are you saying uh, a hard right social candidate cannot win in New York? Statewide, yes, I am. Uh, how about how about here in Westchester County? No, no, but statewide. At, 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 it, but but at, there, I'm trying it depends to get on where, but fact, not statewide. Oh, in Westchester not here. statewide. In well, but there have been individual Republicans who have won individual con congressional districts. Bob Turner did. But Bob Turner lost to Wendy Long in the Senate primary this year in another statewide race, the statewide primary. It's been 14 years since the Republicans won statewide office in New York. It's very interesting. In the bluest states, mm -hmm. uh, two years ago, there are 38 statewide, and I'm talking California, yep. Illinois, Connecticut, you go through the 10. And of those 38 statewide races, governors, U.S. senators, auditors, controllers, attorney generals, guess how many Republicans won? But my question was Only not, two. But, but my question was Only about two. New One York. was Lieutenant Governor of Vermont. The point is in very blue states like New York, it's gotten a lot bluer since but uh, does 1980 when Javits line, lost. Does the conservative line in the conservative party make your job tougher? It complicates it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily make it tougher. Well, Sometimes there, it makes it more there are conservatives easily. and there are Tea Party reactionaries. And what's happened is not you, not the leadership, the electorate is saying to Steve Saland and Roy Williams, sorry, Charlie, you might have been a great Republican for 25 years. You were wrong on one issue. You're out or you squeak through by the skin of your teeth. I'll say this. It's a reality. I'm really happy Steve Saland made it because I think it sends a good message um, that you can break with your party and it could oh. go either way. Well, and he believed in something. And, you know. Oh, wait, wait a second. Grisanti won 60-40. Because Grisanti's a Democrat. Uh, Gr Grisanti ran as a Republican, and it was in a... All right. a and I got one yeah. last question, guys. Todd Aiken, um, we thought he was dead. The party tried to get him out as best they could. They begged him nationally, everybody else. They tried to do everything, but at the end of the day, he would not go quietly into the good name. Now, all of a sudden, with the polls, Dominic, this guy's within 10 points. <sighs> I, I, I see this difficult dance the, the GOP party has on this one where... As much as they condemned him and they treated him as if he was toxic, they'd like his seat in the Senate. Um, what do they do here? Do you, do you still stay away from this guy? Or do you put your arms around the, him, albeit delicately? Party, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very delicate dance. I don't know if this is a rejection of the media, why he's doing well in Missouri. Yeah, yeah, I really don't know. He's still but down. They say he's still, right, points, that's the still. point I was about to make. We, it, it, you know, this still could tip, and and he could lose badly, or he could close the gap. The National Party, I just don't know. I guess if he got within five, they could yeah. put some money in there. What he said was so reprehensible. 
uh, what do you do with and this? And he apologized for it. He might have that's, apologized. That's he still finished. said it, you know? Uh, yeah, well, it was elegantly stated. Uh, look, President Obama said, you know, those uh, people Don't in the country love to uh, hold on their guns and anything. their religions. Yeah, uh, but, you look, know. Look, legitimate rape, I mean, you, you ne that's on the epitaph. I mean, I'm saying everybody, every Republican, Romney included, condemn this guy within 24 hours, God bless of him course. for it. I'm saying something different, which is, now all of a sudden he ain't going away. Do you actually say, If he's come apologized over here, for that remark, which he did, you back him. Ugh. All right, back we're gonna take a quick break, everybody. When we come back, a big issue in the state of New York Fracking. Governor Cuomo seems to have something of a change of heart on the issue. We'll talk about that after this.